Ottawa W. Gurley knew he would never be a success in the Jim Crow South. He was born on Christmas Day, 1868, to free slaves in Huntsville, Alabama. He later grew up in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, and he was largely self-educated. Gurley married his childhood sweetheart named Emma, and he became a teacher. Then took a really good job with the U.S. Postal Service, but he always dreamed of a better life. Along with his new bride, Gurley risked everything to join a stampede of home seekers seeking freedom in an opportunity called the Great Oklahoma Land Rush. On September 16, 1893, the 25-year-old entrepreneur joined the Cherokee Outlet opening, running 50 miles before finally stopping at a plot of prairie grass. Whew, I'd imagine they were tired. Standing on a plot of land with Emma, he staked the claim in what would soon become Perry, Oklahoma, one of many towns advertised to blacks in the new territory. Gurley invented Oklahoma as the start of a new life for black Americans decades after the Emancipation Proclamation, and he was ambitious. He ran for county treasurer, was made principal at the town school, and ultimately opened a successful general store, which he ran for a decade. By the turn of the century, Gurley and his fellow homesteaders heard tales of giant oil booming in a nearby Tulsa. A gusher well called Ida Glen No. 1, the first find in a massive mid-continent oil field, was making local folks in Tulsa very rich. O.W. Gurley wanted in. He sold his store and land in Perry and moved about 80 miles to Tulsa in 1905. Taking the second major risk of his young life, he bought a large tract of land on the north side of the Frisco train tracks. He wanted to start a city, so he mapped out how everything should be done. He envisioned upperly mobile blacks who would, like himself, were looking for opportunity. After the Emancipation Proclamation, Blacks who had followed the Native American Trail of Tears as slaves could now claim land. So they moved through Kansas in the 1870s and 1880s, and then blazed Gurley's path through the Oklahoma territories in the 1890s. Gurley knew freemen and sharecroppers would make their way to Tulsa, so he built a grocery store on an avenue, and he named it Greenwood after a town in Mississippi. Then he subdivided the land and made it into residential and commercial lots. As Gurley expected, Greenwood soon became a beacon of wealth, education, and advancement, rivaling areas of New York, Chicago, and Atlanta. Doctors, lawyers, and realtors flourished. Luxury hotels were built, and millionaires were minted. And because of all those businesses, when Booker T. Washington arrived, he dubbed Greenwood Negro Wall Street. Greenwood was perceived as a place to escape oppression, economic, social, political oppression in the Deep South. Greenwood, it was an economy born out of necessity. It wouldn't have existed had it not been for Jim Crow segregation and the inability of black folks to participate to a substantial degree in a larger white-dominated economy.